and welcome to today's video. I'm very excited because I am teaming up with my friend Angie Daniela Kniebist and we are both going to be talking about super hyped up products from years ago. You know, products that were in beauty community favorites from 2016, 2017, 2018, but things that we didn't try, which was kind of hard to do because me and Angie, we love makeup. We try a lot of makeup. We buy a lot of makeup. We review a lot of makeup, but we both managed to put together a list of things that we had never tried. So we're going to do get ready with me testing hyped makeup. Like, can you believe me? I never tried Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse Foundation. I know, right? Everybody's tried this except for me, I think. So I have that. I have Milk Jumbo Pencil in Milk. Never tried it. Holy Girl Favorites. A lot of y'all, as soon as I said those product names, were probably like, oh my gosh, you've never tried that. So this is going to be a fun video. We're going to get ready using these products. And if you're new here, I want to say, hey, my name is Heather and makeup makes me happy here on my channel. We don't try to be perfect. We just want to have a good time with our makeup, whatever that means. I do upload lots of new videos every single week. So I hope that you will subscribe before you leave today but we have a lot of products to test, try, we need to get ready, let's jump into it. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a collaboration with my bestie, Angelica Nikvist. I'm sure you're already following her. She is the queen of color. She creates beautiful makeup looks. She always has such great opinions and reviews on makeup. She does beautiful swatches, beautiful looks, beautiful reviews. And not only that, but Angie is an awesome person inside and out. She genuinely cares about other people. We are both on Team Science. I love her dogs. I love her husband. I love her family. My family loves her family. Like just an amazing, an amazing person. And when I, I think I said in a judging new makeup or something, I was like, oh, I've never tried Milani Luminoso. And Angie was like, we should do it together. We should do it together. If you haven't already done it, we should do it. I was like, yes, let's do it. So Angie and I talked, we talked with some of our other friends, like what are some hyped beauty community products to kind of make a list of things we had never tried. And there are a lot of things that I have tried, like Tarte Shape Tape. Everybody talks about Tarte Shape Tape. I've already tried it. So what I did was I went shopping. I bought a lot of things that were super hyped in the community, like the Morphe 35.0. Y'all, it is 2023 and I went and bought the Morphe 35.0. Can you believe I never tried this? So what we're going to do today is we're going to mix in some really hyped products that I already had in my collection, but it's mainly going to be about the products that are super hyped that I never tried. Make sure after you watch my video, you head on over to Angie's channel and you watch her video. I'm excited to see what she creates. I already know the products that she's been buying and I know it's going to be such a good time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom y'all in nice and close. We are going to be trying the Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse Foundation. I want y'all to be able to see how it applies. I'm going to prime my skin. I did not buy a brand new primer. I tried to think of all the primers. I'm like, I feel like I've tried everything. So I do have a favorite, the Tatcha Silk Canvas. This was super hyped for so long and it's actually a staple in my collection. So I'm going to prime my skin. I'm going to zoom y'all in and we are going to try out some of these new products. Okay, so I have never tried Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse. I was talking with my friends and I asked y'all over on the community tab, what are some hyped products? And I can't believe I've never tried this. So I actually bought two shades we're gonna test out. I bought medium beige, no, medium 2.5 natural beige. And let's see, I thought maybe we'll just swatch these on the face together. Okay. 
All right, that's an interesting texture. Now I will say I do exfoliate my face a lot. I use a lot of AHAs, BHAs, and I just try to take care of my skin, but I use a lot of actives. I have oily skin, I'm 35, I live in a humid place. So my face is always a bit lighter than my body because I'm always exfoliating, but I just wanna match it to my neck and chest. All right, the next shade I picked up was medium four, which is honey beige. I ordered online, so I just did my best to guess. Um, and so many of the shades online either looked orange or pink. So I thought I'd get a couple of shades and try and see if maybe I could mix them. But I didn't want to have this video be with foundation that completely didn't match. Now, a lot of people were also saying like Max Studio Fix foundation. I had that foundation. I used it for years. A lot of people were saying um, like the Maybelline Fit Me foundations. I tried those. So it was kind of hard for me to think of like what foundations did I not try? So this one from Maybelline Fit. So what I think we'll do is I'll kind of just mix these two colors. I usually go for foundations that are in the medium category, unless they run really light, I'll grab medium tan. And I go for foundations that have a warm olive leaning undertone. Ah, okay, let's see. Let's just see where we put that right there. Cause I know the big thing with this foundation was so many people were like, oh, it was so cakey, it was so thick. But I mean, I feel like that gave me a light medium coverage maybe. Let's, let's, let's see if we can build this up. I don't know if sponge or brush is the best way to do this, but I'm just going to keep going with my fingers like this so we can mix and see, see how that goes. I usually prefer a sponge for foundation, so that's what I thought we would go with for here. It's like a little chunky. I kind of have to really press it in to get like the chunks out. That's interesting. Let me know, let me know what are some products that immediately come to mind that you're like, this product was so hyped and I never tried it, especially by category, because I would really like to hear like products and see if maybe I've tried them, maybe I've tested them. Okay, y'all, I have to say, I'm just picking up extra bits of this and trying to like build the coverage up. I expected this foundation to be a lot worse than it is. Like I am a little nervous because I'm actually going to be taking my son. He's gonna be hanging out with some friends tonight. So my husband and I are going on date night. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I hope this foundation doesn't just look like a mask, you know? Okay, I am shooketh, shook, shaken to my core. Listen, it's testing old products. I might as well throw out the word shook because I feel like we use that all the time. <laughs> but uh, especially like back in the day, right? We were all shaken. We were all obsessed with everything. We were talking about our holy grails. I am kind of into this foundation. Like this looks nice. Dream Matte Mousse. I mean, listen, ah, uh, maybe because I used a sponge, maybe because I pressed it in, but I think I have a nice medium coverage, very skin-like matte finish. Yay. <laughs> now listen, I could not think of a concealer that I had not tried that was super hyped. So I'm like, that's okay. I have loved and used Tarte Shape Tape for so long. I don't have a good shade for myself right now. I have a shade. This is a 29N Light Medium. This is, this is, you know what? You know what? This is what I use when I'm at my lightest and I want a bright under eye. But you know, I used to love a bright under eye, like a bright beaming under eye back in the day. So we are going there. We're gonna do the bright light under eye today. Why not? 
we're testing out products from years ago. We may as well go with techniques from years ago. Everything old is new again always anyways. Like trends come in cycles. So today we're gonna do the trend of the very bright under eye. And I have since moved on from Shape Tape. A lot of times it's not that an old favorite was bad. It's that makeup, technology, ingredients, formulas, everything is constantly improving. So I just feel like I've filmed things that I like better. And also every year I'm getting older, my skin is changing, and I filmed things that my oily 35 year old under eyes like a little bit better. Shape tape is still great though. Don't get me wrong. It still does what needs to be done, but I've just found concealers that I like better, you know? Let's just press, press, press this in. Okay, your girl is looking like Casper. Casper, the friendly ghost. I had a hard time thinking of a powder. I, listen, I loved the Too Faced peach matte powder the loose one i went through so many of those i bought so many when they went on sale and i finally remembered the rimmel stay matte powder lightweight mattifying powder how many of y'all bought and tried this powder i never tried this powder can you believe it i love matte i'm an oily skin girl why did i not try this powder so i bought this in an under eye setting shade and then i ordered things online and i was like let me order one too that's like deeper maybe we could use that as a bronzer did people use this as a bronzer i felt like they did do that as well as a matte bronzer so i ordered like an under eye shade and then i ordered a shade that i could use as bronzer so let's see i also ordered a shade that is way too light for me but that's okay i'm going to take it on my sigma brush and I'm going to set my under eye. Woo! I'm going to have the brightest under eyes ever. I am going to be channeling Kim K 2017 vibes for sure. But I remember people raving about this powder. I remember one time I was like in Walgreens looking for this powder because I was like, I'm going to buy it. Everybody likes it. And it was sold out. It was sold out. And then I just never tried it. So what perfect time to try it now. And they still make it. So let's see how this makes the under eyes look. Okay. I'm giving bright under eyes. I'm going to set the T-zone, but I'm not going to set the rest of the face because I definitely uh, picked a shade that is too light for me. Okay, this powder is nice. I see why people liked it. I usually use a loose powder and press it into my skin, but I love a powder like this and like my next HD powder, I love. When I'm going for a pressed powder, for under the eye especially. My NYX HD powder is a favorite. And I know that's been a favorite of a lot of people for a long time. So I don't know that this Rimmel powder would beat out my NYX HD. But I definitely see why people like this. Because this powder I think was less than $4. What I bought it for. And I just bought it from Walmart. I'm going to use my next high glass finishing powder just to buff and kind of finish off the rest of my face. Set it just a little bit because I need something that's a little more true to my skin tone. And since we have the matte matte on, I like to use a glowing finishing powder. So I'm just going to buff this in. I definitely don't remember anybody on YouTube talking about this except my friend Angelica. She got me hooked on this powder and I have repurchased it a ton. I think NYX is discontinuing this one so I won't take too long talking about it. But yeah, I'm just going to set the rest of my face with this and then we're going to play with some other products that I've never tried before. Okay, I never bought dip brow from abh 
I mean, it's Dipro. So I was like, this is a perfect time to buy it. I actually remember my sister-in-law had dip brow and she really loved it. But honestly, my sister-in-law has beautiful brows anyways, like genetics, right? I have some brow hair. They are very thin and the tails of my brow is very blonde, very blonde, like white blonde hair. My natural hair color is like a, like a dishwater dishwater blonde is what I would call it. So I bought the dip brow. What shade did I buy? Granite to go with my hair. So we're going to try a dip brow. Look at this. It's all nice and new. I'm not going to do 2016 Instagram brows, but this was the product that people were using and I never bought one. So it's going to be fun. We're going to see if it's still that brow pomade. Okay, so I have a couple of different angled brushes here in front of me to see what to do. Because normally I just fill in my brow with a little micro brow pencil, uh, maybe a brow pen, and I don't really use pomades. I have tried some products like this in the past. But I feel like Dip Brow was the one. Dip Brow was the one that started it all. So I, I'm expecting greatness here. But I do have a couple brushes in case I need to change up the brush. This one is from BK Beauty. I really love their brushes. So I'm hoping this one will work well for me. I mean, a little bit goes a long way. Like, I just picked up a little bit on my brush. And it's really, uh, it's really doing it. Okay, so I did that. Let me see if I can kind of create my arch now. <laughs> it's a little, like I expected it to be a little more dry, honestly. I feel like I'm going to have to build it up here. Maybe I'm blending it out too much. But so far, it's easy to use. Then let me kind of flick in here and try to create some hair-like strokes. Well, you know what? No wonder Instagram brows being thick and blocky were the thing. Because, I mean, I'm sure I could get better with practice. But I feel like I have so much more control when I use my little micro brow. But what, what do we think? Like, I don't know. I feel like when I use brow pens and pencils, I can just get, I don't know. I feel like I have more control. I feel like my brow's looking a little blocky. Now, I've tried tons of brow gels. I have tons of brow gels. The one I feel like that's most hyped right now, and for good reason, is the Patrick Ta. This is the second one I bought. I used one up completely. I love it. It's hyped for a reason. So I'm going to set my brows with my Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination. I feel like this doesn't look too bad. It's a little more intense than I would normally go. Maybe like a little thicker than a normal brow I go for. But I'm still feeling it. I still think it looks pretty, pretty good. So let me fill in the other brow. And then we're going to play... With the infamous Morphe 35O. Okay, I take some responsibility for the thick brows. I need to practice with that. <laughs> definitely need to practice. Definitely need to practice with that. But I put on my MAC Paint Pot Eye Primer. I've been using that since before I was a mom. And my kid is 13. So I've been using that for a long time. It's an old favorite and it, it, I love it. But the eyeshadow palette, the Morphe 35O. I never bought this palette. This was the palette on everybody's favorite list. I mean, look, we even have the old school like sheet insert with the names. Everybody, I won't say everybody, so many people on YouTube love this. I shouldn't say everybody because I wasn't using this palette. I never bought this palette. I always thought this palette looked so repetitive. I even texted my sister-in-law when I was prepping for this video. I was like, hey, didn't you have the Morphe 35O? Can I borrow it? She said, I threw that out years ago. <laughs> 
And the thing is, I'm not saying that this isn't a good palette. I've never tried it. And makeup, like I said, it changes. It comes a long way. New, better things are coming out every year. So I want to try this. This is so neutral. This is so repetitive. This is so many of the same shades. I'm going to be sticking mainly to this column over here because this has some color. So we're going to see why was everybody loving the Morphe 35O? And I know a lot of it has to do with the fact that it was inexpensive for so many shades. So I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know if I can keep holding this big palette up. So what I'll try to do is tell you the shade names. And we're going to see, since I have a primer down that I know and love and that I trust, we're going to see how these shadows perform. I'm curious. Look, I even pulled out a Morphe brush. This is the M433. And I'm going to go in first with Wild Card. You may have forced me to buy the 35-0 palette, but you can't force me to create a neutral eye look. No, I'm just kidding. I love neutrals and color. I really, really do. But these oranges were just tempting me too, too much. I mean, this is pretty. Like, this is blending well. I'm not struggling to buff it. This is, this is nice. This is a nice shadow. Okay, okay, okay. All right, 35-0. You're doing good on this one shadow so far. Okay, I'm going to grab this BH Cosmetics brush and I'm going to jump over to one of the light matte shades called Up Front. Kind of like a vanilla shade. And I'm just going to kind of buff out the edges, buff under my brow bone. I used to love to highlight my brow bone and I really don't do that anymore. Like I love to take a shimmer shade and pop it right under the brow bone to kind of lift, but that's not my vibe anymore. Just not my preference right now, but I definitely wanted to take this kind of matte shade and buff it under the brow bone today. I think that would be very reminiscent of the times back then. Okay, I've got my Sigma dual ended brush and I'm gonna dip into Mighty Fine this kind of like more brick red and I'm going to put that in the outer corner and I'm going to fluff. I love like a matte in the crease, a matte in the outer corner, a shimmer on the lid. That's like such an easy effortless look for me. I love doing that. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. Something easy and fun. Like I said, we're just it's going to be a casual date night for me and the hubs. Okay, so let me move this little, let me move this little thing. So we went in with this shade first, we went in with this shade, and we went in with this shade. And what I feel, whoop, okay, we went in with this shade, this shade, this shade. What I feel like would have made something like more versatile with this palette is if we had like a bright orange shimmer. But we don't. Like this shade, but a shimmer. These shades, but a shimmer. But what I do have is this shade right here. So let me put the palette down. Let me tell you the shade names because I can't keep holding that thing up. It's too big. This shade name is called Gasp. Okay, so I've got this on my brush. I did spray my brush with a little makeup setting spray so I don't get fallout. And this is just a basic shimmer shadow. Nothing amazing. I definitely feel like shimmers have come a long way since this but it's pretty easy effortless okay that's pretty that's pretty i love warm tones on the eyes i love warm tones on the eyes okay i'm going to take another one of the orange mattes in that row this is powerful is the name of the shade this is a lunar beauty brush and i'm just going to put this right under this lower lash line like that just gonna drag it back and forth you know i think these shadows are performing nicely i mean the eye look is coming together really easy 
And then I'm going to take another Morphe brush and I'm going to go into Special Effect. This shade that's kind of on the top row and put it right here. It's this like white gold shade. Definitely more of like a warm gold. I'm even going to blend a little bit to kind of make sure it wraps. All right. Oh my gosh. You know what? I bought that jumbo pencil from NYX. I wanted to do something with this. I meant to use this as a shadow base and I forgot. Dang it. Okay, we are going to use this thing. I'm not putting this in my waterline. That's going to be crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw. No, nah, this isn't what y'all were going crazy for, was it? Are you in the waterline? Let's look at it in the waterline. That's cool. Not my vibe though. Not my vibe though. So what I'm going to do is use this as a base for shadow. Is this... Is this normally like super white? Oh, it's okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to use this and we're going to put another shadow on top right here. And we're going to let that milk be a base for a shadow. So let me, let me find a brush and we'll put a bright shadow on top. Okay. So I'm picking up the shade Legacy and I'm going to put that on top of the milk pencil. I mean, the milk pencil... I'm guessing it was so popular because it was a drugstore brand. It was white. I don't know. I remember people using it as bases. I never really got into the white uh, waterline that much. I mean, I'll try anything a few times, you know what I'm saying? But I guess that works okay as a base. I don't know. Like, I I don't know. But I am going to do liner and lashes now. And then I'll come back because I have several other super hyped products that I want to try with y'all. And I really need to know if y'all have these products. Do you still use them? Where's the top for this? I don't know. Okay, I threw on some black eyeliner and some House of Lashes Noir Fairy Light Lashes. All already, already in my collection. But I had the ABH Contour Kits. I love the ABH Contour Kit. What I never bought was the Shade and Light from KVD. Never bought that palette. And now they have duos, shade and light duos. So I was going to buy the full KVD contour palette, but I'm like, let me just get a duo instead. And <laughs> this is a cool tone contour. I told y'all I have warm olive skin. I do not love a cool, a cool contour on me. And I have chipmunk cheeks. I know it. I don't have the face for contouring. I do like to bronze up my skin. So what I thought we would do is we would take first a bronzer and we'll try the Stay Matte from Rimmel, the Stay Matte Powder in uh, Pecan. And I thought I would try this as bronzer and then we'll contour. But I was like, I need a little bit of a bronze. So let's see if this matte powder works as a bronzer. It looked like at Walmart, it looked like it had some warmth. So I was like, let's try it. Let's use this as bronzer and then we'll contour as best we can with the shade and light. And trust me, I need some bronzer because like I got a bright under eye. I've got the bright under eye. And this, this video was not to try old makeup techniques. No, no, no. This was just to try the products and see if we were really missing out. Okay, so the Rimmel looks good as a bronzer. Let's try Shade and Light. Let's try it. This is Subconscious, this cool tone shade. Ah, that is cool toned. Did y'all see? Hold on. That is cool toned. But I think it's gonna look nice now that I have the bronzer underneath. Look, all my little hairs are wanting to get caught in it. Okay, I'm not a nose contour person because I already have 
a pretty straight nose. I have my dad's nose. So I'm just gonna do like that. Okay, bronzer and contour over here. I mean, that KVD powder blended so nicely. Like that was pretty easy. Okay, okay, should I also use this? I don't know, this one's looking a little peachy, but maybe I can go over just a little bit from the Rimmel powder. Okay, let me take that brush and just buff it a little bit. I don't know that it's gonna do a lot, but there we go. Okay, let me bronze up the rest of my face because I have new blush, new to me blush, new to me highlighter and liquid lipstick. Okay, the product that started the whole video idea, this concept, Milani was launching a Luminoso collection. And I said in that video, I've never tried Luminoso. It's a cult favorite. I know, and I never tried it. So I said in that video, maybe I should do a testing makeup that was super hype that I never tried before. Y'all seem to love the idea. I talked to Angie. She was like, if you haven't already filmed that video, let's do it together. I was like, let's do it together, girl. Cause neither one of us have tried this blush. So I know she's using this one too. I know a couple of things we're using the same of. This looks beautiful. This looks really beautiful, really peachy pink, corally shade. So I've got my Sigma brush and look, I may have a bright under eye, but I feel like I am looking really nice. Like I'm loving the way my complexion has come together. So let's go on with this Luminoso. I'm gonna pick it up. Man, no wonder y'all love this. No wonder y'all love this. That is beautiful. And look, you could totally skip highlighter. That's, that is a very glowy blush, okay. That is a very glowy, very fresh looking blush. And because of this peachy pink tone, I bet this is pretty universally flattering as well. That's pretty, okay, okay, Luminoso. Oh, okay, uh, honestly, I would skip highlighter. I would skip highlighter. Let me go back and kind of like freshen up my bronze because I feel like I should have chosen a smaller brush, honestly. There we go. We're pulling it back together. We're pulling it back together. Now, when I think of old school hyped highlighters, I immediately think of Jaclyn Hill and Becca Champagne Pop. Already had that. Love it. It's gorgeous. And MAC Mineralized Skin Finish and Soft and Gentle. Already have that, love it. And there were tons of highlighters that I already had, like the Maybelline ones, the Wet n Wild ones. So I was like, oh, what can I do, what can I do? What's a highlighter I never tried? I love highlighter, I've tried a bunch. But I never tried Jouer highlighters, Jouer Citrine. I remember watching people show this in their Sephora hauls, getting this in PR, talking about how beautiful it was, how blinding it was, and I, just never ever bought it. I'll be honest, I was kind of late to the highlighter train because I have oily skin. When I first saw people talk about highlighters or when I would read about it in magazines because really, I just threw it. But before the beauty community online, before YouTube, I had magazines. I was reading, like I subscribed to Cosmopolitan, Seventeen, Allure, um, Harper's Bazaar, Vogue, like I had subscriptions to all the magazines and I was always looking for makeup tips. And I would always kind of shy away from sparkly highlighters because I'm like, I'm oily skin, I'm oily skin. I don't wanna glow, I don't wanna glow, I don't wanna glow. And then I tried highlighters and I was like, a new person, a new person. I love highlighters, so I've tested and tried so many. And I never tried Jouer, so we're gonna try that together. I'm picking up off the floor, hopefully it's not broke. Okay, good as new, it didn't break. So let's see. I mean, my cheek is already so glowy because of the Milani, so let's just add more of a glow. This is a Lunar Beauty brush. Back before Manny had a makeup line. He didn't have a Lunar Beauty brush to use, but I, really like this for highlighter. So I'm just gonna apply it. 
that's really pretty. Is it anything revolutionary for what I have now in my collection? No, but it's definitely pretty. Don't unsubscribe. I never tried an ABH liquid lipstick. Can you believe it? I bought the shade Pure Hollywood. Pure Hollywood, that's the one everybody was raving about, right? And it is light, look. This is light. This is like light. This is very light. My eye is red too because I poked myself in the eye while I was doing mascara. So it'll go away. It's fine. That's light. That's like light, light. Okay. Everybody loved, everybody had these. Not everybody, so many people, but I am going to put on a darker lip liner. You know what I love? ABH lip liners. They're amazing. So I'm going to put on ABH Raisin and then I will put on this liquid lipstick. All right, y'all. This is the finished look. I'm so excited. I got to kind of go back and test some of these cult favorite products. Luminoso is gorgeous. I am very excited to keep playing with the Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse. I want to see uh, how that wears over time. I think it looks pretty good right now. The eye look is pretty, but I'm going to give that palette to a friend. I don't need a huge palette with so many repetitive shades. If I'm going to wear a neutral look, I'm probably going to reach for something that has some multi-chromes, really special shades, something a little more poppy, but overall I do feel really beautiful in this look. I cannot wait to watch Angie's video. I know the makeup that she bought, so I cannot wait to see the look she creates. I really want to know what she thinks of Luminoso and this matte foundation. I'm excited. Definitely check her out. She'll be linked in the description box. Blocks? Box. <laughs> be, please do subscribe before you leave. I would love to have you stick around. I have lots of fun videos planned, but I'm ready for date night. We're going to go get some food. We're going to hang out. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye. Thank you.